Yo, it's the Real Do The Kill podcast, the Easy Corner collab. We back with another one. Subscribe, rate, review, Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to your podcast, wherever, however. Easy, talk to me. Another day, another dollar. It's another episode of the Easy Corner plus the real deal with a kill. Our guest, one of the best point guards, not only in the city of Houston, but one of the best point guards, I, I would say, in the state of Texas. One of the best players in Houston. Houston Hoops on Seven Lakes 2024. Louisiana Tech commit is in the building. Mr. A.J. Bates, man, how you doing today, bro? I'm good, man. I appreciate y'all for having me on here. Man, first of all, man, we I kind of just want to get started off. How was your Christmas? How was – and obviously it's, it's your new year, so it's a two-part question. Number one is how was your Christmas? But number two, what are your goals in 2024? Oh, yeah, so uh, my Christmas was real easy. You know, I uh, spent time with the fam, uh, worked out a lot. Uh, just kind of got to spend time uh, with not only my family, but my teammates, just, you know, for, with practices. Uh, and then some goals I have for 2024 is just, uh, honestly for me, just uh, become a better man, you know, just, uh, and also, like, help around the house a lot more. And just uh, kind of build a closer, closer relationship to God, <laughs> which I think is something that I've been trying to work on for the past for, for the past couple of weeks. But uh, as far as basketball, uh, it's just about getting better every day. And I would say just improve in all aspects of life. I see you got the Louisiana Tech on your on your yeah, chest. Yeah. What made you come to that decision? Uh, what really got it for me was uh, just how they were on me from the day they offered me. Uh, Coach Smith did a real good job from the day he offered me to the day I signed. Like, uh, I really like he built that relationship instantly. Like, he texted me uh, as soon as I posted no no that I, that I was blessed to receive the offer. And ever since that day, he's just been texting me, asking me about. Uh, about school, about life, but the one thing that really got me to go to Law Tech was just the relationship that you know, like they built with my family. Like uh, 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 Coach Smith has a daughter, and uh, you know uh, she wrote uh, a card to my sister, and and like that really made me feel like okay, like I'm going to a spot where they care about not only the players but the families, and you no, know, you know, you know, like, and Coach Hester reminds me of my dad a lot, like as far as like his coaching to where he's hard on you, but uh, but he loves you. So I think like that was a really big big, like, part to make me go to Law Tech. He says Law Tech, obviously that's the future journey for you. Yeah. But obviously um, we're the easy corner and the real deal with a kill. Um, obviously you love this game of basketball. Yeah. Talk about the journey and how you started when you picked up your, your fondest memories of picking up a basketball. Uh, it started off uh, – uh, it started off uh, in Michigan. Uh, you know, uh, I'm born from uh, Detroit, Michigan. Uh, my pops played college ball, and uh, he was at uh, Concordia uh, in Auburn. And I just remember just going to his practices, picking up the ball, just you know, being a little kid, just you know, be, you know, you know, just hanging around him and his teammates. Uh, and then I moved to California uh, when I in like 2009, mm -hmm. and and I think like that's when it really started to pick up. You know, like, I started to actually train, and I remember like when I was little, my like my pops, like he was my coach, like. Like, I think, like, until I moved here, like, he had been my coach all my life. And, and like, the crazy thing is, like, he was, like, like he wanted me to be, a, like, a pass first guy first because, you know, like, you don't want your son taking all the shots yeah. and my parents complaining. Yeah, yeah. So he was always hard on me because he wanted me to be the best. So it was always just do the little thing. So I think that, that like, like, that really helped me be the player I am today. And, like, and, like I think that. And like in my game, I got a little bit of everything. Like I got that Midwest grit, yeah. I got that finesse from the West Coast. And I, yeah. And I think now I'm starting to get that, you know, like that Texas, South, yeah, yeah, like Texas, Texas athletic, toughness, yeah, yeah Texas yeah, toughness, yeah. athleticism, which is crazy because I had no athleticism. Like, like I couldn't yeah. jump over a, a, like a phone book or nothing. Like I was unathletic. Like, like, like it was bad. But you said you talk about your athleticism and how it's gradually improved. But I've said it, and I've watched you for a very, very long time. You have been able to get the job done. What about your game that has that you seem mature, but you always had that confidence, no matter what age, to get the job done? Because I just feel like you've been a KD staple for the past four years. You've been the staple for KD district basketball. So just talk about that. Uh, I just think that like like what really sets me apart was just my playmaking and like just being a coach on the floor. 
I think that like that really helped me out, kind of just solidify myself as a top guy, like you know, like within the city. And I think that as like as time went on, you know, like I always knew I could score, but just having that confidence to go out there and be like, okay, I can set my teammates up, but if like if I need to go, I need to go. And I think that with like help from trainers, my pops, and you know, Coach Hessian, like like you know, like me and him talk about basketball every day. Like I go to his office in the morning, like we talk, and like he's just like. Hey, like, you know, like this is a game. Where I'm where, like, I'm gonna need you to you know to go out and score, or hey, I need you to facilitate this game. You know, because like they're gonna be focused on you, try to find your teammates. So I think that just playmaking and probably just my shooting, cause, like that's something that people had said before that I would sh- that that you know the, the the main things people said that I couldn't do is I, I couldn't shoot, I wasn't athletic enough, and I wasn't fast enough. My shooting got better. Oh, okay, he's still not unathletic. Well, now I'm dunking the ball, so it's like. What do you want? What, no, like, what's gonna do? Okay, well, like, he's not quick. I don't need to be the fastest on the court. Like, I, you know, I know my angles. I know how to use my body right. So it's like I don't need to be the fastest. Like, I know how to control and be, you know, and play control. So I don't need to be, you know, you know like deep fox, you know, sprinting up and down the court. You're a student of the game, and obviously, you know the lineage and the history in this short time period you've been in this city. I want you to actually talk about the thing that you've actually really brought up. Talk about these critics of Houston basketball. And like like just talk about like you just said, like they don't give you your just due. Obviously, like you said, they said you couldn't shoot the ball. They said that you're not athletic. But so talk about the critics of Houston basketball. Because I said, don't get me wrong, I'm 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 one of them. But at the end of the day, I said I'm willing to come and tell you like this is what I think. But yeah. just talk about you when you and your peers see those criticism. What do you think of that? I mean, everybody's. I mean, like everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, like I can't change what someone thinks, but like, you know, like I let my actions, you know, take over. But I mean, I just think that it, like, if you was me to be better, uh, you know, like I, I remember freshman year, they told me I wasn't athletic enough. I spent every day in the gym working on just squats. Hey, and was it that jump guard? Jump guard. Shout yeah. out to the jump guard. Shout out jump guard. Shout out jump guard. I got you. I got you. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, I got you. And, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. We know all the KD guys is going to jump yeah, guard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But like jump guard really got me right. You know, like, mm-hmm. you know, like, and like that was really the main focus was just, okay, let, like, let, let's get the, the body stronger. And then like, and then that next year was, okay, well, he can't shoot. Well, I spent all my time in the lab shooting. So it's like, okay, well, he's not quick enough. We on the track with Jump Guy, so you know Jump Guy gave me right. So you know, hey, listen, if y'all ever need any you know, boost, you no know, the jump or to get faster, yeah. hit no, no, hit up Jump Guy. <laughs> so I know you were talking about Chris, so it's like, cause you know how we was in high school. I know, I know it's probably the same Chris than we was in high school. Mm-hmm. But they was, you know, we was, we was playing ball. They was like older. You couldn't really relate to, but you guys might like easy that watch y'all play, and you know, not in the same age, but same group. Yeah, that's relatable. You think that's much more easier for you and some other guys to like talk to somebody like him or get on an interview as opposed to like you know the older guys as you know suit and tie they really just not yeah in the culture in a sense yeah uh, I think it's easier just because like like they understand the type of basketball we play because like the older guys are more used to yeah. you know traditional yeah traditional to where you know it's gotta feed the big man you know your big's not supposed to be shooting threes but like with guys that are younger like they understand the type of basketball that we play yeah. So like they can see like okay like this guy, he's not a typical point guard, but he can yeah. do what a point guard needs to do. So right. I think that like just like having people like that really helps us, kind of just not get overwhelmed by these older guys, yeah. kind of criticizing us because they don't know what the game is like, yeah. like nowadays. Cause do you look, do you look at rankings yourself and be like, man, why is this dude over me? Uh, Honestly, no. Like I really don't look at rankings. I rather just I rather play against that person and just show them why I should be. Yeah. Ranked higher. But, like, honestly, like, I don't really care about the rankings. So, where you at right now? What, what's your number right now, currently? Yeah, see, I, I, know, know, I, know, I, I know I know, he's within the top 10 in the state. I already know. Like, probably, like, top 20, top 30 in the state. So, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty I, – I'm, I'm for sure. I, I, I'm for sure. So, were there other offers besides, like, Louisiana Tech or Louisiana Tech just, like, stood out, like, look, I'm coming here? Uh, I would say uh, Sam Houston had a really good uh, chance to give me. Uh, the one thing that kind of hurt was just uh, when uh, – um, when the head coach had left, and, like, mm. I, I, uh, I didn't hear from them for a minute uh, yeah. until they hired Coach Fob. Yeah. And you know, like, Coach Fob is a great guy. Yeah. But, like, I just felt like it was just too late yeah. to kind of get me. And like, and like from that time, like, La Tech was just on me every day. So it was just like I kind of had to like, yeah. like show like, respect. But like honestly, like, that coaching staff is great and like nothing against them. It's just 
just the timing. Of yeah, the timing, of course, of course. That makes sense. Course. That makes sense because it's, it's that recruiting process could be tough, right? You know, then sometimes too we see it where a team will guarantee you like, hey, you're gonna be starting here, and sometimes it don't go that way. Um, we hoping that you start, obviously, yeah. right? You wanna you wanna go there and start. You wanna go to the league and everything. But <clears throat> let's say you go to La Tech and then the promises that you was getting ain't happening. Like, what what is your mental like? Like, how are you mentally just overall with stuff like that? Honestly, I'd rather you know, like, I'd rather earn earn it. You know, yeah. like, a coach yeah. can tell me, oh no, like you can start it, you can do this. I'd rather earn it. Like, yeah. I'd rather go in there, you know, be the freshman on campus. That's you know, that's fighting for chip me. on the shoulder. Yeah, like yeah, chip yeah. on the shoulders. Going no like no like going in there showing them okay I can start like I can play with y'all like you know like y'all see all of this stuff about me but like let me show you why I'm like I was on the top guys in Houston so right. I'd rather just go in there and you know improve myself yeah because it's one of them things where it's like sometimes they'll tell you like all right we're gonna have you start but it's, it's something that's like you gotta have it go one out the other yeah like I hear you coach you know yes sir whatever but then it's like I still want to have that chip still want to go in because I haven't you haven't haven't proved anything yeah. yet. So yeah, I I, de I definitely get that. Speaking of chip chips on your shoulder, talk about the move to Texas in 2019 because obviously a year later it was COVID. Yeah. So just talk about kind of just being that new kid on the block and you know you still trying to that chip and you know everybody in Texas is is is, yeah. is all eyes if they see one 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 type of trend they trying to shut it down. Yeah. But yeah, like yeah. like I said, you've been a kind of a mainstay. So talk about that transition in 2019 and also the COVID year in 2020 AU because I was in some of those gyms and I'm just like, oh god, like we didn't know what was gonna really happen. Yeah. Uh, honestly, like honestly, like um, uh, that that moving process towards here was kind of tough because I lost my coach and like. I was really close with him, mm -hmm. so like I was really just trying to finish what I started in California, like with my friends and stuff, knowing that it was my last time playing with them for that for that for, for that summer because I didn't know like when the last time I was going to see him. And then so getting here, I was kind of homesick, and like, I and like I was just like I want to go back home, and I was like just give it a chance. So then we we started eighth grade, and I I played football, so like I was like I did no I did that just to kind of like waste time in battle season, and then like once the battle season came, I kind of like. That's when I realized, okay, I can really like do something special because like my my middle school, like they were okay the previous year, but like once I got that chemistry, cause like a lot of those guys played football with me, so like once we built that chemistry, I was like, oh yeah, we're gonna be something special. And then so a uh, I went to make who's back with my California team, and like when I came back, that's when everything I shut down. So I was like, okay, how am I gonna get in the gym? But luckily, I got a like elementary school, like right by my house, like I could walk to it. Mm -hmm. And so me and my pops would just go there every day, just 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 working out, just getting the shots up. And I think that really helped me out because it really made me stay focused and be like, okay, you need to put everything aside and just really focus on this. And like, if you put focus, like you are gonna get better. And like that really helped me out too because we was doing the, you know the track, we was doing the football, like we was doing everything possible to keep me in shape and to make sure that I'm still developing as a player. Can you talk about your middle school team in eighth grade? Like, talk about that team. Oh, that team. Oh, my gosh. That team. Like, we were, like, like, we were some characters. I'm not going to lie. Like, uh, like, a lot of my teammates now, like, Brett, yeah. Zeus, Hagen. Like, we was all on that team. Like, it was a real – like, I think if that team – like, if that group would have stayed together, like, like till now, like, we would have made a lot of noise. What was the record on that team? I think like, – Y'all won district, though, probably. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think we lost, like, three games – Max. Max, yeah. but y'all still one district? Yeah. So I, the only question I have about that, because you know that eighth grade year that you guys were in, that was the first year of the city championships. Mm. So I coached that Lake Olympia middle school team with Jacoby, Chris, and, like, you know, we played in that, that game against Silsby with Draylon and Jared. Yeah. So, like, I got to see kind of a lot of the, the best eighth grade teams around. Like, that was the first – it, it, that's when I knew that the 2024 class was special yeah. because I, I walked into that gym yeah. and saw a lot of those top players in eighth grade at Booker T that day, yeah. and I was just like, oh, yeah. my God. Like, yeah, because our, yeah, cause, cause like, cause our, our district was filled with talent. Like, you know, like, like in my school, you had me, you had Brett, you had Johan. Uh, at, uh, at Tompkins, you had Luke. Yeah. You had Wyatt. Oh, Luke was on your team too in middle no, 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 no. Oh, oh, at the district. Yeah, yeah, yeah. District, yeah. But, like, we had a lot of good talents where, like, it was – and, like, and like it was tough because Morton Ranch was probably the – 
that that was probably the best team. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, cause like they had like they had a lot of athleticism and yeah. size. Cause like that's when Christian was like tall and was like yeah. he was just out rebounding everyone. Yeah. So, but like I think like that like that eighth grade year was probably one of the best years. Talk about your transition to the Houston Hoops, the EYBL circuit, the, the, the creme of the de la creme. We know the statistics on if you play on the EYBL, who makes pros and all these Division ones. Talk about your first time touching an EYBL team, the legendary Houston Hoops. And I want to say, give me the conversation on how you, how you got on that team. Uh, so it started off. Uh, we was in Dallas. Yeah. Uh, we had. Uh, I was with Dragon Nation Houston at the time. Yeah. And uh, and uh, we had played uh, Doya at the time because like that's when like everything was the like, COVID. So, like they yeah. couldn't really use the, the, the like the, the hoops name. Yeah. But like we had played it and like they had Bang, they had Aaron, they had all these guys. Draylon. Draylon. Yeah. yeah. So like I held my own. I, I think I had like twenty some that game and like. I mean, like, we lost by, like, 20. Yeah. But, like, I mean, like, of course, like, like you don't lose to a team like that. Yeah, exactly. But, like, I held my own uh, coach bag. I talked to my dad uh, afterwards. Uh, uh, and, like, like, this, that stayed in contact. And then, like, he had came to a couple of my games. Yeah. And, like, I didn't know who he was. So, like, it kind of. <laughs> you know how bag roll up in there just with the hat down. Yeah, like, with the hat. Just looking. Just like, yeah, yeah. Like, talking about the game. And then I, I, I'd be like, okay. And then, so, after, so after my freshman year, uh, my pops uh, like had came up to me. He was like, "Listen, like this is a big opportunity." Cause like I was trying to stay. Cause like, like I had that relationship with the guy. And that's the that's the other question I just really have. I keep going with that story. Yeah, but like he was like, "Listen, like if you just take this opportunity and like you just 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 trust me." I was like, "Okay, no, no." Cause like, yes. I was gonna steer me. Yeah. Right yeah. Like, so I was like, "All right, let's get it." But that 15 u team, like it was, like it was some characters. Like me, Jared, yeah. Trey, Justin. Yeah. Yeah, Luke. Like like I think like that group. Bonded really well, like on on and off the court. I just want to know, like, when it comes, because what's your advice when it comes to a decision like that? Because there's a lot of guys that can get the numbers on independent teams, but then go to a circuit team to play the role. So, like, what is your process? Because mind you, Draylaw Miller is a guard. Justin Begg is a guard. Jared Harris still needs the ball. Luke wants to shoot. Yeah. So, like, when you when, when you when you go through like. I know you're probably thinking that you want to build camaraderie, but like at Drive Nation, you're the man. Yeah. But on a Houston Hoops EYBL team, you're almost about to play in a role. What was the final decision in that process? Because I know that's hard. Yeah. Uh, see, I think like I was thinking long term because like in college, like like you gonna have four or five stars on your team, and like you can't just be the guy who's just gonna you know, take every shot. So I'd rather get prepared now. You know, like get used to okay, your role is to you no know, play defense and shoot the ball. Like, I'd rather work on that now then you know like have to wait then I get to college and I'm like okay like what I gotta do. But I think that like just like for anybody who's gonna like make the decision just find the best fit but at the same time just know what's best for you. Cause like if you cause like if you wanna really, really take this to another level, like I would say just do what you're good at and join a team. But if you still kinda like eh, I would say just work on yourself and, and like stay independent. Just talk about, like, your mindset going in there because I, I, that's what I believe that kind of separates you with a lot of guys in this city. I think you're one of the players that stays even killed. Like, you don't, we never see you really get too high or react to things. Like, I just feel like you always played with a pace that you've been here before, like you've seen it. Like, so just talk about your mindset to train yourself to play with high caliber P5 guys like that. I mean, it's just – like my drive to win, so like I'm willing to sacrifice my scoring if it means I gotta guard the best player. Like, like if I like if we need a win, like it don't matter if I gotta score thirty or if I gotta, mm -hmm. you no, know, get ten assists. Like, like I'm willing to do whatever it is to make sure that we win. So like to so like to play with those guys, I knew that I had to uh, be a ball handler. I had to hit open shot and, and I had to defend. So I and and I think that we all knew what we had to do. For us to succeed, and I think we did that pretty well. So, like, for me to sacrifice scoring to be a playmaker and to be a defender, I think that that's what really helped us out. I mean, like, and of course, like, we had guys like Justin who can shoot the ball, yeah. And so, like, he know, like, he will hit his shots, you know. And Jersey uses athleticism, the mm -hmm. uses athleticism, and like all those guys, we kind of sacrificed what, like, we took what we're all really good at and just made it into a good team. Like Coach King said it best: "We're the Justice League." Like he, like we, like we're mm -hmm. all main guys that but when we come together 
No, no, it was the Avengers. It was the Avengers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the Avengers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was the Avengers. He said that like when we all come together, like separate, we're all great heroes, but when we combine together, we can do something special. So that's what really got us in that mindset. I know EYBLs like can be intimidating for some people. So I want to go back. How long? How many years you played EYBL? Three. Have you ever had like a humbling moment, like a team humbled you or a player humbled you? It was like, oh shit. No. Uh, the crazy thing is that. Uh, that first year, like yeah. uh, that was the week long, one, or like, that was the two week one, cause like it was because, um, like during COVID. Yeah. So like, so like, no, actually, no, like we was there for two weeks. The EYBL is why I'm not playing football today. Oh, really? Yeah, cause that like Texas is known for football. Yeah, we yeah, know. yeah. But I went into Augusta, and I just I seen the talent, and like I like I got home, I told my parents, I was like, listen. That football stuff is gonna have to stop because you know, like yeah. everybody, like I'm spending all this time getting hit when guys are in the gym getting better. What was the shoes playing in football? Quarterback. Quarterback. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So like I like that had really impacted my decision because like the like the level of competition was just like yeah. insane. So it, like that really like that first year was like okay like this is a whole different level. So yeah. like so like you so like if you really want to be one of those top guys you got to lock in from the jump. So quit yeah. all the Quit everything else. You got to just lock in on basketball. That's your 9 to 5. <laughs> that. oh, not, not even 9 to 5. It's 9. It's 12 to 12. Like, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, wake up, work out. You got, like, and it's, like, and it's different because, like, we, like, you no, know, like, we kids, you know, like, we still got high school, or, like, we still got classes and stuff. Yeah. But it's, like, you got to treat it like it's, like, your life depend on it. Like, you got to, like, work out. You got to maintain your body. You got to get through a high school season. Then get to another season to where, like, you got to travel. You got to. No, like it's really like on some pro stuff. Like, like you really got to get ready mentally and, and physically for that. You better in football, or basketball, basketball, basketball. Yeah. Playing quarterback was. Would you give yourself one through ten? Ten being the highest. Seven. Seven. Yeah. It was like arm strength. You were cerebral. Yeah. Like what kind of? Would you if you had to compare yourself to a quarterback? <laughs> who you who you compare yourself? College pro. I would say probably like a. Like like a less athletic Jalen Hurts. Less athletic Jalen Hurts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I could throw the ball, I could run a little bit. I was slow. Like that's when I was still fat. Like, no, like, yeah. I, no, I set a little weight on me, so I wasn't blazing fast. But like I know how to use my body, so like I know like I can, you no, know, like I can stiff on like a truck. But like my main thing was just using my arm strength to get my yeah. receivers open. I know we talking about EYB, but I want to I want to touch on football a little bit. So do you watch a lot of NFL? Yeah. Who your team? The Lions. Lions. Oh, wait, hold on, wait. Are you a Lions? Well, well he's from Detroit. From yeah. Okay, yeah. so yeah. you had hard times. So now y'all, you, you seen y'all? You got you got him going to Super Bowl? No, I'm not. You're a realist. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, see, like I, like I don't like. This is no knock to anybody else, but I just can't stand Cowboys. Man. Like they think every like. Oh no, hey. They yeah. think they like, bro. Like y'all are not all of that. <laughs> like there's better teams. Like y'all just got the national spotlight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a trip how now the generations go on that now your generation see like damn, these Cowboys fans is horrible. It's going, <laughs> going to keep going on forever and ever. Your kids, your kids, kids, your kids, kids, kids is going to say the same thing. So that's what's that's what's going to happen. You got an NBA team? Pistons. Pistons. Okay. Yeah. So you just hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Talk about that. Hey, listen. I <laughs> hey, like, you know, it is what it is. I mean, like I mean, like you gotta make changes at some point. So it's just like if it's trading somebody, cutting somebody, <laughs> coach, like, like if it But he just like, got the seventy mil contract though. But like, like 20, 20, 27, 28 games is like that's that's wild. But I, I always thought he wasn't meant to coach a team like that because they so young. Yeah. I think what they one of the youngest teams in the league. Yeah. You know he he needs like a a veteran team. You know, and I seen somebody say they should trade Cade. I don't know if that's no. I don't know if they should do that or not, but. No. They need to get Kate some help. Yeah, I did, like I was talking to my, my like my teammates like if he gets another like another guy that can get his like they would like cause, like cause, like they're not bad. Like, yeah, Durant's yeah. a the Durant's a solid guy. Jaden Ivey's solid. They just need another guy that can get theirs. Yeah, seven lakes, that? seven lakes. Obviously, like I just like I like I like I said we we know what you've meant to. Seven Lakes basketball. Talk about the moment you stepped in the door, knowing when they rolled the ball out, two, four, mate, 
two fours making that impact? Just talk about <laughs> yeah. talk about that. Talk so, about coaches and everything. So my freshman year, uh, I didn't, honestly I don't know how, where I would be just because I because freshman, you know, I'm you know, I'm coming from football. You know, one of my teammates had hurt his knee, and he was gonna be out for the season. So they had put me with this like this group of guys that were trying to you know either make varsity or get cut, and. Like I, I killed it. Like I was like I like like I stood out and and like and like I looked at my coach after and, and he's like, yeah. My first couple of games, I I'm I'm not gonna lie, I struggled. Like it was it was bad. Like I think my first like the first the first five games, I think like I I averaged three points. And then I think I think once we got to my first district game was when I really took off and and, and it was against Morin. I, was LJ still on the team at the time? No, no, no. Like, no, he had just left. Yeah. Okay, he had just left. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I, yeah, you do. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah, I, yeah. I was there when LJ was playing against Seven Lakes, but I, but I was. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. Was I was yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah but like, but no, like that was like, like that was my breakout game because like I came off the bench and I was just a spark plug for us. Mm-hmm. And then the next game it was against Tompkins, and you no, know, me and Luke always had that rivalry, and that was my first game started, and yeah. I had the game winner. So like. So like from that from that from that moment on, I just knew okay, if I could just continue what I'm doing, I can leave a big impact on the school. Damn. Did you 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 won newcomer of the year? Yeah. You won newcomer. So just kind of just talk about these KD rivalries over the year. Obviously, you got KD, you got Tompkins, now you got the new rivals in KD Jordan, Mady Creek. So just talk about over the years you leaving an imprint on KD basketball because like I said. I watched the LJ Cryer years. We can even go back to your boy Trey Pickney. Yeah, Trey. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so Trey Atif Russell and those boys. Yeah. And obviously, congratulations on being the all-time leading scorer at Seven Lakes because oh, that's a shit. big deal. Because you guys, guys like Trey Pickney, Atif Russell, Cameron McGusty. So, like, just talk about you know the lineage and history yeah. behind those Seven Lakes greats. Talk about that. You know, all-time leading scorer at Seven Lakes. I mean, like it's just something that I always like. I always thought like my like my freshman year. I remember I, I like our record board is, is in the front of the gym. Yeah. And I, I took a picture of it and I said I'm breaking some of these records. The, the rec- records I wanted to break was all time points, all time assists, and all time wins. So I knew that from the beginning is is that I can like if I just go in and I just produce and just play the the way I know I can play. I like no like no like I can get it. Like, and like I didn't even like like the record didn't cross my mind so. Last year, like when I got a thousand, and like I was, it was like midway through the season, and like I started talking to my pops. He was like, "If you just continue to do what you're doing, like you can really break it, like and like and like not just break it by a little, like really extend it." So like that's been my like. Of course, like I'm not really you know, like chasing chasing it, but like it's something that like like if you play, you, you know it's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, and like I think that like honestly, like like. I didn't do it by myself. Like my teammates have helped yeah. me out along the way. Like I've had a, a, like a plethora of great teammates yeah. that have helped me achieve this. Like you know, my shout out Josh, you no, know, yeah, uh, Taha, like like all those guys. Like they really got me going. So you know, like so I'm from my freshman year. You know, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like like that like like that group. Our chemistry wasn't the best, but they still were showing me the ropes. Like okay, like if you really want to do this, like you gotta like like the two seniors I had that that year. They really. Show me ropes like okay like if you, like if you really think that you can do it, like just like do this and this and this so that you can develop as a player and really elevate your game and like also playing 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 EYBO mm-hmm. that helped me get that confidence of like okay I need to I need to bring this energy over to Seven Lakes and I think that my sophomore year that's when we really because like that's when I got to hard back yeah and like that's when we I brought the energy and like he was bringing that energy and and I think that just like that California. Connection like yeah. that, that vibe like we kind of brought it to the team, and like and like and like that's what really elevated us. Talk about your relationship though with um because I said I know that he I don't know if he's still around, but with Trey Pickney, like it's like yeah. it, because at that point like when we were in school, he was the guy like that was the forefront. Even though he had a talented team with Prince o- o- Onawas, Atif, yeah. all those guys playing like when they were like in the heydays, like oh these guys can make a straight one. What is the advice that Trey Pick Trey Pickney gave you to as a Seven Lakes point guard from point guard to point guard? Uh, he just told me just you no, know, just continue being myself. Just you no, know, just be a great teammate. Just be a playmaker, but just be that dude. Like, just go out there and and show why you can be the best. So like that's what really like he really gave me that advice just to really 
like motivated me. Talk about your first ever playoff experience in Seven Lakes because because it was your sophomore year, right? Freshman year. Freshman year. Freshman, so oh. so 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 tell me who you went out to. I, I we'll get to last year, but like but like tell me those first two years in the playoffs in the in the in the buzz you started creating because we're gonna get to your junior yeah. year. But talk about those first two years. Freshman year, freshman year, we played a, a, a talented a talented Travis team and Travis that was twenty twenty one. Yeah, that was like Makai. That was Cam. Oh, Makai. Oh, yeah. yeah Makai was dis- yeah. Yeah, and, and like and like and like I started training with Makai and like like around that time and like that team was just we got smacked. Yeah. But I knew like okay, but but getting smacked also taught me that it's not sweet. Like you gotta really get your guys together because like we was like we were all over the place. Mm-hmm. So like that really, that really like was like okay like you got that one. Got out the way. I was get better in the off season. Sophomore year, we ended on a heartbreaker. Were, were you were you the offensive MVP your sophomore year? Or do you, I know you want to district MVP. I was district, district MVP. MVP. Okay, yeah, you're district MVP. Okay. Yeah. So sophomore year, we played against Bel Air. We great great battle. And then Noah just cashed one from the. From no. The, oh. Yeah. Newman. Newman. Noah Newman. Nah, bro. <laughs> he ain't cashed one. Bro, and like that's the one because like we said. <laughs> And like we had winning that time, we said, "Do not let him. <laughs> don't let, don't help. Don't help because that's all he's good for. He's not gonna put the ball on the ground. He just you know if he's open, he's shooting. Yeah. And like <laughs> we told uh, our guy because like we knew Jacoby was gonna take that shot. I mean, like oh, Jake, yeah, go get yeah. I mean, like I mean, like he's a top guy. Like yeah. I mean, like no, like he won't take that shot. And our guy just helped and we just released it. And I'm gonna from basketball like looking. I'm like, oh, was that the second round or third? Second. Second. And. I, I see it go in, I'm like, dang. Like, it's just, uh, like, that one still hurts. Cause like, of course, of course. Because, like, cause, cause like, that was the senior group that I had, like, like they were juniors my freshman year. And, yeah. like, I kind of built that connection with them. Like, like okay, year two, like, you regime, like, it's all or nothing. Like, yeah. we didn't compete. Yeah. And, and then, obviously. Just know it just got to cash <laughs> And, uh, man, like, it just hurts talking about it. <laughs> I guess. It just hurts talking about it. And then, last year. We're getting before the playoffs. What the run that you guys kind of made during the season? Just kind of just talk about that run. Obviously, like guys like Josh, here comes the freshman sensation and Nas Price, Brett Norton, all those guys. Talk about your. We're, we're going to get to the playoffs, yeah. but just talk about the names that you guys were taking throughout that year. Yeah. Because that year, I was just like, it almost propelled, like, unfinished business to this year. Yeah, I mean, like, it started off, I mean, like, we started off playing against AZ Compass. And, like, and like the yeah, one yeah. thing that Heston always told us, told us that we're not, like, like we're never going to duck smoke. Yeah, like, no, yeah, like, that, yeah. Like, like, no, like, we're going to be the ones who not. So, like, that was a big challenge for us just to see, like, okay, where do we stand? And, like, we lost. Yeah. But yeah. it was a respectable loss to yeah. where, like. It's a national ranked team. Yeah, like, with, with five-star guys, P5 guys. Yeah, yeah. and, like, we, like. No, we, no, we held our own. Like I think that game, I could have done a lot more, but can't can't change that. And then next game we lost to Cassie Cedar. I don't know because Jarrell Barron, Jarrell, Jarrell, the Brown commit. Yeah, Jarrell, yeah. Jarrell had a three, and then so we after that uh, we we kind of just kind of had like a no like a not like a moment. Was it like a twenty? Was it twenty two at the time? Game winning streak. Because y'all went on like a seven, yeah. twenty two game winning streak. I think we went on a, like we went on like a. Like a two game win streak, we lost to Dawson. Okay. Then shout out Jaden Miller. Yeah, yeah, shout, yeah. Shout out Jay Millie. Yeah. Uh, no, wait. We had won a tournament, came back, we played Dawson, we lost by three. That that Thursday we played uh, J Lo. Shout out J Lo. Marshall. Marshall. And, okay. And he and he gave us the work and like we were just like listen and like and like we've been in together. We were like listen, if we want to make uh, no a big run, we we got to stop. All the little stuff, like bickering, all this stuff. Cause like of course like we're gonna bicker. Like mm-hmm. I mean like we see each other every day, like we're gonna get annoyed. Like if someone brings bomb, like like yeah. yeah. But like we just kind of like, okay, we gotta hold each other accountable. We gotta make sure that if we're gonna do this, we like we like like we gotta do it right. Hmm. And that next day, we just came out like like a new like a whole nother different yeah. and like and like and like I think that that's what really started. The the streak. Because the streak. because I was sitting here on the news every day, every week. I was like, bro, because I think last year, did I, I picked y'all to get to the regional finals because I said, 
I, I love I love Seven Lakes, but I said nobody's beating United, bro. I'm sorry, no, no, I, I said no, nobody's be nobody's beating United, but like I said, they gonna get they gonna get to the regional finals. But like just talk about what did you learn about yourself in that streak? And uh, did you and did you win district MVP again? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so uh like like the one big thing that I learned is that like no matter what, just 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 be within yourself. Like we had a lot of guys who felt that like their role should be bigger, and I and I think that some of those guys were were, were in the right. Yeah. But it's just knowing about what what can you do to help a team be successful, mm -hmm. and I think that the guys who did their job they did a great job. Like like EJ last year, number three, like he came in thinking that he wasn't gonna play a lot, and he started and like and, and like and like we told me like he said, listen, we need you to hit open threes and we need you to defend. And, and he did that too. Uh, he did that great. Like he would hit corner. Like like his like his three was the corner three. And I just always and I knew because he put in the hours and he he, he you no know, he repped it. And I said, EJ, if I hit you in the corner, just shoot. And he he shot it. And he really stepped up for us. And like and like and like our whole roster. Like we had guys step up and really just come out their comfort zone just to help us and be successful. But one thing that I said that really helped me was just. Having, having the support from not only my coaching staff but my teammates, to be a leader and you know be the guy. That's a great question that you say that because obviously like district MVP, district newcomer of the year, at a young age, knowing that there are seniors on your team, how do they, how do you convince them to buy in when you're the young guy? It, it was tough at first just because I was a freshman. Just yeah. you no. Know, Okay, freshman, whatever you, like, whatever you say. But, like, I think that the more the guys were around me, they realized, okay, he he's serious about this. Like, and I think it really clicked my sophomore year because that's when we were really senior heavy. Yeah. But, like, they really trusted me. Like, okay, like, we're giving you the keys. You, you, you like, just drive us to the finish line. And I think that with, like, those, the guys I have now being, like, on JV and sophomore, like, they, they seen that. So they went. So they now, when it's their time to come up, they they know that I'm not trying to steer them wrong. I'm trying to guide them so that we can all do it together. And I think just building that bond, not only on the court but off the court, really helped me out. Just spending time with my teammates, like me and Nas, work out together. And like I'm always trying to like ask him, okay, like you seen this on the film? Like what do you think? Or like I'll see like Brett in class and be like, hey, like you watch the film? Like it's just about. Building that, building that connection not only on the court but off the court and just enjoying that time together. <clears throat> so I'm hearing I'm hearing a lot of things. I'm hearing a lot of accolades. Addition newcomer, addition MVP, all time breaking records. You consider yourself the you know the best to come out of Seven Lakes. I know you're still there, but you think you're the number one? Uh, I think I'm up there with some of the guys. I mean, I, I mean, I still think I, I got to prove myself. Yeah. Like I think that like. Like the records don't mean anything, and you don't produce. Like right. I think that if I solidify this year with a ring, I think I can easily be the best player to come out of seven days. But I think that I'm still like I still haven't proven nothing. Right. Like, you know, like I can win as many games as I want, but if we're not winning in playoffs, it, like it don't mean nothing. Yeah, and then you you know social media is big right now. So when you or you walk around on campus, they saying they calling you probably young goat, young legend. You know, what does that do for you, like, mentally? Does that go one out the other? It's just it's just something like I keep in the back pocket. Just, like, yeah. I, mean, like I mean, like, of course it's great to have that love and support from the community yeah. and, like, the, like, the people, like, in my area. But at the same time, it's like, I'm not, like, I'm, like no, like, I'm going to prove it. Right. So I still got to just keep, keep that killer mentality and, like, have that hunger to win. Yeah. So I think that, like, that really motivates me. I want to step outside the court a little bit. Right. I want to I wanna, I wanna understand the younger generation. All right. Me and Easy 30, right? So we, Saturday weekends, we'll go to like the mall, the movies. Before we go any further, do you got a girlfriend, yes or no? No, I do not. All right, we can move on. <laughs> All right. So, you, you know, you're putting basketball to the side, probably not playing a video game. Like, what, what's what's a weekend like? Because you said, was you 18 or 17? 18. I just turned 18 on the 30th. Yeah, yeah, he just, he just oh. turned 18. Like, he, oh, his birthday shit. just happened. Happy, yeah, happy birthday. Yeah, happy belated yeah, birthday. Just, yeah, 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 yeah he, almost, he literally he just turned. 21. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You could probably still go to the gas and get you a daiquiri now. <laughs> but 
on a weekend like what? What's what's a weekend like to get away from from basketball? It's kind of tough because I'm always just eager to get on the court. Yeah, so it's not so really, like, like it's hard. But honestly, like it's really just about spending time with my family and like spending time with my friends because it's yeah. hard to spend time with them during the season just because I'm always locked in. Yeah, I'm I'm locked in whether it's training or it's practice or it's just working out. But it's really just just to spend that time with them just to catch up on life. Yeah. Like and like. Me and my pops were just talking about basketball, just sitting them down, just watching the game, just talking about, okay, I seen this in the game, like, and like it's just little stuff like that. Or like with my sisters, like they don't, they don't bother me. So like it's just like, how can I give them attention? Because like it's yeah. hard to give them attention in the season because I'm always in and out of the house. Right, right. And it's just doing little stuff just to help out, just to show that my parents, like my parents, I appreciate everything they do. And then like with friends, it's just no, it, no it's just about just just enjoying the time I have with them, just. Yeah. No, going out, like going to get food, just hanging out, just chilling. So I think like like probably like those are, like the main things I do outside yeah. of basketball. So mainly like no no girl no distractions from like girls or nothing like that. I mean like I mean like if it happens it happens, but like right. But I'm really just more focused on yeah like getting through the season and just focusing. Yeah, on kind of Molly movie is big. You know, you walk around the mall and you see you know see something you're like okay whatever whatever. But I know that can sometimes get away from the court, since court is key. Cause I noticed we were watching the video earlier. Just I think you was talking. I forgot who you was talking to, but your personality stood out. Some people might mistake it for like cognitive, but I look at it as confidence. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times with younger people, like in high school, they're more a bit shy, not really expressive. Where does that come? Does it come from like your pops, somebody in your family, to get like that confidence? Uh, it just came from you know. Like me being young and just just going on and just saying hi, which the craziest thing is because I grew up with a stutter, so like it's just like it's yeah. wild for me to just be so talkative, yeah. and and like just not let that hold me back. Right. So like I, uh, it really just came from just being around teammates and friends and family and just talking just about literally anything. Yeah, cause I know that sometimes yeah, I mean when it comes to that, cause the podcast platform wasn't there when we was in high school. So now this it gets y'all like a little practice training for like the them que- yeah, yeah you exactly. know these questions gonna be more laid back you know what I'm saying but when it comes to those other people they gonna ask some hard hitting questions some yeah. analytical about the stats the game you had you know what I mean so that that's that's very key before I get back to easy though I do want to ask this question cause I asked my boy Justin I want to know your top five artists I do don't disappoint me now okay you already <laughs> tell me you got you already tell me you got OT seven Kwani in there yeah yeah, yeah. so OT seven Kwani okay I uh, I listen to Trying to think. I, I listen to Ken Carson. Who? Who's Ken, that? Ken Carson. Kane Carson? Ken Carson. Ken Carson. Ken Carson. Who's that? He's just the artist I listen to. Where's he, where are you from? I don't, I don't know. Ken, <laughs> does, he, does, he, does, he, does he rap? He yeah, he rap. Right. Yeah. He rap? Okay, Ken Carson. Uh, I listen to a lot of Tyler Creator. Okay, okay, uh, I can rock with that. Some Brent Fires, and, okay. and I listen to... I'm gonna say Drake just because like, I listen to yeah. Drake. Your five's not bad. I can rock with it. I can rock. I'm, I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check on Ken Carson. I'm gonna see. He's more like a lyrical rapper. Nah, it's like it's more like that that like new school type of rap. Like Uzi. Yeah, yeah. But Uzi not bad though. I like. Yeah, okay. I'm, not, I'm like Uzi be my top five too. Like. Okay. Okay, but I can rock with that. The the brand of KD basketball, obviously, I think you're at the forefront with Elijah El- Elijah. Elijah Black yeah, and, yeah. and Jaden Hall at Jordan, Gibson and and then um, and, and Jamal, Jamal yeah. at Mady Creek. Argument for Scotty Gullery at Tompkins. Yeah. Just talk about this brand of KD basketball because like we're in school, we we know that KD, we know they're gonna dominate that rocket and that pigskin, that football. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. what they known for. But for the last probably uh, like well, last four years, like not, not even four because we could take it back. Like yeah, yeah. Jamal Bienemy made state in 2018. Yeah. L.J. Cryer averaged. 35 his senior year in 2020 for Morton Rats. So just talk about like almost probably I would go since like 2018 yeah. that this KD movement for basketball has elevated. Talk about it. Yeah, I mean like even before I got there, I mean like we knew about LJ and like oh, we knew yeah, that everything yeah. he could do. Oh yes. But I would say like ever since my freshman year, like it's been real competitive. Like yeah. like my freshman year, like we went we went seven and zero, and then we went. Four and five in the second round addition. So it's not like like you no know, like Katie's not a pushover. Like there's there's talent. Like then like there's guys that 
they're not the most athletic. They're not the most like j just like me. They're not athletic. They're not fast, but they know their their stuff. Like like each school, I would say has a player that that can get theirs. Yeah. Just luckily, then we got a, like we got about four, five, six of them that can know, you know like no, like, uh, no, like they can go. But I think that our the our district's been real competitive ever since like like from my freshman year to now, like it's been real real competitive. And I just think that people don't really put a lot of respect on Katie just because they think it's football, football, or you know they think when like like the basketball is just really like bland. But yeah. like we got got like like there's hoopers in, there's there's hoopers in Katie real hoopers yeah real, real like, hoopers l like like I, I I would go as far as to say if each region like each district had like to get a district five. I wouldn't be surprised if Katie come out on top. If Katie was like a Duncanville where it's just one school in a like you know like in a city, I think that we can go really far with the amount of talent that we have. Yeah. Like and like and like there's so much talent that it would be hard to cut people just cuz yeah. like there's so much like there's so many good players and like it's just hard. But I think that like it like 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 if we were like Duncanville where it's just one high school yeah. in a big city, I think that we could go to state East. every every year. Because you guys are damn near one of the best teams right now yeah, with, with, with a spread district like that. The other question I want to ask you, I want, I'm going to actually ask you about two specific players. Number one, I'm going to ask you about Nas Price. Obviously, <laughs> Nas. that's your guy. Yeah, that's one my guy. One of the best players in the country in 2026. Talk about his development from last year as a freshman to now. I'll, no, I'll take it back to when he, I was in and he was in seventh grade. I knew Nas – could be something good, just just the way he played in seventh grade, and like he was smaller, skin like still yeah. skinny, scrunk. But I knew that, like, like like around this time that he'd be good. And I knew, like, just watching the, his development in the gym, just the way that he's like Manorish as a player, like he's like he's gonna be something really good. And like with him in practice, we just like is like we go at it, like we gonna like we gonna fight, we gonna scrap, like, but it's out of love, and it's. Because I know that he's gonna bring the best out of me, and I'm gonna bring the best out of him. And just his development from last year to this year, I think it's more of just maturing. Just last year he was a freshman. He was yeah, trying to make which 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 yeah, we all yeah. like yeah like freshman playing versus like I like I've been through it and like I kind of told him I was like hey listen it's gonna get it's gonna be high it's gonna be low but you just can never just let your mind just slip like and like I, and like and like that's one thing I told him last year was just as long as you stay focused you'll be fine. For seven lakes to be successful, what do you need from him? Just be him, be be that guy. Play like a four star. Simple as that. Just show people why why you had those offers, why your grade is so high. Just just be you. Like and I and I told him every time like you can like like if he's flushing Nas, be you. Cause Nas Nas is probably one of the best players in, in like in the state, in, in the country, country. Mm -hmm. easily without yeah, a doubt. Yeah. He just gets in his own head because he's the number one player in Houston in 2026. Yeah, yeah, it's and, not even a doubt. Yeah, and I and I think he just overthinks a little bit, but if, but when Nas is just playing freely, Nas is like 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 there's times in practice where he just be hitting stuff, and I'm and I'm just like, hey, you <laughs> you got it today, I guess, but not like from like Nas's development is just more like it's been incredible. Just his work ethic, his the way that he's matured, the way that he's Growing as a basketball player, like it, like it's really impressive, and I'm really proud of Nas. And the other person, he's my guy, Mr. Brett Nord. Like we, we, Brett Nord, we, yeah, we, Nord. we have a good relationship. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you a quick story. I was actually going to leave when y'all played San Antonio. Brett, no, I no, I wasn't gonna film it. Brett comes up to me before the game because my camera's in my car. Brett said. Easy, pull out the camera, it's gonna be a show. Yeah. I said, Brett, I don't have time to be playing with you. You know I don't like wasting wasting SD card yeah. space and I don't <laughs> like wasting battery space. He said, Easy, I'm gonna tell you again. Pull out the pull out the camera. This boy Brett probably went for 27 and that game and yeah. that game with a shot. I was like, he was like, he's and this is what he tells to me. He looks at my camera and I don't think he even got it. He I zoom in, he looked at me, easy. Hooper's hoop. I was like, yeah. I said, bro. yeah bro. So, but just, to, but I was with him during the summer because yeah. he played for my boy for FFE. So, like, like, so Co Coach Blair is a mm -hmm. good friend of mine. So, like, I saw the development and the work that he put in specifically this year. Talk about him knowing that's your guy since middle school, and yeah. this is y'all last ride together. 
what's the conversations like with that guy? Like it's almost like a Kobe and Derek Fisher like, like thing with, with, with y'all two. Talk about that relationship. I mean, it started in football. I mean, like, like it's just like we both play football. You know, like he, like, like, you know, he was one of the first guys to really like bring me in, like, you know, like make me feel welcome. And then eighth grade basketball, we kind of just clicked, and I just like I knew that I can count on him. You know, I drive him on back door. I drive him when he be hoping for that three. And then so my freshman year, like we kind of split up because you know, like he was on. Honestly, he should have gone to JV. But like he was one of the top players, but we still, like we still worked like, like at practice like, like he like because I think like they were practice before us, he would stay after you know we like get up shots and like I and like and like and like, and, like I seen his development and, yeah and he's come a long way yes yeah because like Brad before was just a just a guy who just wanted to shoot but now but now he can mix it up he can like he can really mix it up. and like and I think that's one thing that I that I noticed from him that he's really been. Going, like going for is to be a three level guy, and and I think that he can like 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 he can continue that into college. Specifically in that Brennan game, when you got like y'all were the prime time game, mm-hmm. seven o'clock, the headliner, San Antonio Brennan versus Seven Lakes, two potential state contenders teams. What did you see with his performance in that game? Like, did he just introduce himself to the to the state that hey, I'm one of the best players? Yeah, in this I, state? yeah, <laughs> and I think that. And what did you tell him after that game? I just, I well, it started the night before because he was kind of frustrated because like because like he hurt his knee and like he ain't really played well against Dunga and and I, and I just told him next game like I like, I talked that the, that Friday night was next game and we knew that next day was gonna be a dog fight and I got it going early and then they started dumping and I told Brett I said listen, just go. Go, and Brett went, and then we that final moment. I mean, like Brett really helped us out, and no, I'm no, no, I'm gonna give some credit to some guys. Isaiah Santos. Oh yeah, I was gonna talk Fred, about him next. Fred, I'm, and, that's probably the best freshman in 2027. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, Isaiah, uh, Isaiah stepped up big. Sean who hit the game with yeah. like he had a loud nine points, but it was like it was nine points that we needed badly. Like he was just in the right spot at the right time, just knowing that he put us in the work. It, 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 you know, he hit a shot, and then guys like Tillman, who defensively, like they took that challenge to guard Kingston when I was, you know, when, when I when I was winning or I was out. Yeah. And we had guys like Jesus Trevino, who guys think that he's asleep. Like they look at him like, okay, this why is this guy out here? But he but he can lock up. And then we have guys like Hagen who can come in and hit shots. And we have two of our JV kids, who we had called up, and they and they came in, like they knew their time was gonna be really limited. But they came in with the energy that we're like we're like we're a family. So they like they came in supported, and I think that like with Brett doing good and all of us combined, it kind of elevated all of us. I do have to ask you about that game too. One more question about that game. People don't realize Coach H didn't coach that game. So so for you guys to play one of the best teams in the state, the team that made the state the the, the the final four yeah. the year before and to win that game without your coaches. I remember asking one of the assistants, he said, two force leadership. He made sure that we stayed the course and we made, he made sure that we were going to get it done. So just talk about what did you find out about your team that night knowing Coach H wasn't there? Uh, I found out that we have guys who are not going to quit on – like, 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 like we have guys that are going to fight to the very end. Like they don't care if, what type of dog fight we're in. We're up 20, down 20, tied game. Like we have guys who are gonna fight, like and like we have guys who are gonna stay together, and we're gonna have guys that, like no matter who's coaching, like they gon' like like they gon' stay together. And I think that Coach Cole did a great job because he got us prepared. Because like with Coach Justin being out, he really stepped up with practices and like within our like basketball period, like he really. Made it known. He was like, "Listen, like I know Coach, like Coach Chesney's a guy, but like, what, like, you know, like, like while he's gone, we like we gotta keep it going." And I think that he did a great job with that. But I just think that, like, it wasn't my like like it was like it wasn't only only my leadership. Mm-hmm. I think it was a combination of things, like a team. Like yeah. we all we all spoke, and we all knew what we needed to do to win. And I think that that really that really gave us the confidence and the energy to win that game because. Even when I was being out, he was talking the whole 
A24, A24. Oh, was yeah, Nas didn't play, yeah. Yeah, because like, yeah, Nas messed up his finger. But even with him being out, his energy, talking to me you know, from the bench, A24, I need you to go. A24, A screen, come here. A, like, just him doing that helped us. And I think with all of that combined, that, that's what really helped us pull it out. We're going to fast forward a little bit. Playoffs. Last year, obviously, you go down in the fourth round to Orlando Horton and his boys. I think Orlando Horton had one of the greatest playoff runs. Like I yeah. told everybody last year, he was a minute and 23 seconds away from pulling off the house money upset against against yeah. Beaumont United. Like, like, like the way. But talk about from that game to now, what is the team's mindset from that game last February? Four rounds to 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 this day, January first, twenty twenty four. Finish, finish. That's that's the one thing that we got that that, that, that we say is just finish. Like we f- finish the sprints. Finish. Like like no matter what you're doing, just make sure you, they they you finish all the way through. And I think that that mindset has really carried over from last year. And I think that. Honestly, this is probably one of the best chemistry teams that we've had. And that's what I was going to ask you. The, the, the Obviously, last year, we had the big fella Josh. This year is the freshman Isaiah Santos. I'm not going to tell you to tell me who is the better team, but I felt like this team is a little different from last year's team. Because I think this team is more like winning a game like that. I don't know if you guys win that game last year. I think last year's team was more talented, but this year's team is more well bonded and like chemistry wise, okay. we're, we're a lot better, just because we know like what we have and we know that like if we all just stay together and we just just continue to do what we do, like no matter who we play against, we can play against anybody and and like we feel confident that we can come out with a win. So I do have a question though: two losses, mm-hmm. obviously to Duncanville. And obviously to a Tascacita. Those three, are two. Three, three, three losses to, to Westlake. Oh, Westlake. Yeah. And Westlake too. I do have a question because you guys do beat Brennan. Do you, con- do you concern yourself? Can you guys beat those upper echelon teams? Because, because to me, those are the games you're going to yeah. have to win in the playoffs. Obviously, like last year, you guys were actually favored against Clear Falls. They, a lot of people expect you guys, Beaumont United, Seven Lakes, regional finals. Yeah. Do you have concerns about because there there is there are some teams that you know like oh they're gonna play good during the regular season but what happens when you play the top dogs like can you beat them because even though you guys beat Brennan I think you all what lost to Duckerville only by five yeah. Seven Lakes wasn't really that that much right you guys didn't literally lose to them by the, but but all I mean at Tascosita you didn't lose to them by like by, by like twelve okay so like is there any concerns like. Can y'all get over that hump? Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, there's no concern. I mean, I know, I mean, no excuses. Yeah. I mean, like, we didn't have Nas. We didn't have I mean, the first two. Yeah, okay. I mean, we didn't have Nas, we didn't have Coach Heston. And once again, I was first, Nas was first game back. But, the, I mean, like, but, but, like, we can't make excuses. But, and I think that with us having games under our belt now and with us having all this, though, like, this whole season just to get everything together, I think that by – by the time that we need to play those teams again, like we'll be prepared, just because, like we took, we took their best punch, <sighs> and we felt like we didn't give them our best punch. So we think that no matter what circumstances happens, that we can come through and play against those teams and win it again. That's good. We're gonna actually transition out of the school of basketball, but now it's time to have a little fun. Obviously, on the last show, your boy thinks you guys are ducking smoke. We're not ducking. Mr. No. Mr. We're not ducking Mr. no smoke. Mr. 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 Big, is there anything that you kind of just want to say to in in response to that? We ain't ducking no smoke. I mean, I mean, our motto is we not first, so we can set it up no matter like 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 you no know, like it can be after season. Like we can set it up. I mean, like, we ain't ducking smoke. Like we like we go to it. So I mean, there's some questions I do want to ask. 2024, obviously, large class. We 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 know what it is. And the other thing that I do want to actually talk about you too is um I think I mentioned on the last show as well. 
in a in an era that we see in the transfer portal, and I call this the transfer portal high school, your peers are actually staying four years at school. What does the loyalty mean to you? Because obviously you're at Seven Lakes. You choose to lead instead of just kind of just going somewhere and say, oh, I, I know I'm the missing piece to this state championship, but you choose to build and lead and try to create your own legacy. Talk about yourself being that way and some of your 2024 compadres like staying put at, at places that when we thought like, oh, snap, I think they, they about to leave, but they're like, no, nah, we're going to finish it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just more about keeping your word. Like, I mean, I remember I told Coach, I mean, like, my freshman year, I, I, I wasn't really rocking with it. But I told her, I was like, listen, like, I'm going to give you, like, like while I'm here, I'm going to give you my best. And I think that that really helped me, like, like, like make him feel sure that, okay, this kid's going to, like, like, this kid's going to stay. But I think that it's just a more about, not really more about the school, but more about the community. Cause, mm. cause, like when you stay, you're like, like you just don't have your school support. You have the whole community support. Like, like last year, like everybody was supporting us and uh, us and Jordan. You know, just because we're all from the same little city, to where they're, they're pushing for us to win. Like rivals, are, like like we gonna be rivals in season, but out of season, like we had guys from Cinco talking, hey, good luck to y'all. You know, like we want y'all to make it all the way. So I think just staying all four years is really more about a pride and more about, like, it shows, like, who you really are. Like, of course, like, if it's a better opportunity, of, of course take it. But just staying four years shows that you really care about not only yourself, but just, like, representing, the, like, the, the school and the community. I'm listening, and, I'm, and, I like the, and I like the mindset. And I'm curious to know, like, Life at the best because your goal is to make to the NBA, obviously. But let's just say, knock on wood, something happened. Not injury, but just something like everybody yeah. can't make it. Do you have that, that plan B? Like, okay, if this don't work, then I'm going to do what? Uh, so I actually got certified from uh, by Microsoft for Word, Excel, and all that. So I'm trying to like either become like a sports agent or like an accountant just because I know my dad's an accountant and like I can kind of learn the reps from him, but a sports agent – or just like a statistician, just because I want to stay close to the game. Right. So, and I think that like those are really two. That's very unique. Like you don't hear kids like, especially at the young age, no. say to talk about statistician or, or to, yeah, like stuff like that. Like. I, see, see, the thing is like math. So like math's my favorite subject. So oh, okay. Like, I'm really good with numbers. Mm -hmm. So like, but just like staying close to the game is always gonna be something that I want to do. So just either being like a sports agent or like a statistician or just. Just, just finding a way just to stay connected to the game. So like, it don't matter like what it is, but like those two would probably be the the, the main two I would pursue. And when's your love for that come about? Um, it really just 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 growing up like with my dad, just like seeing the stuff that he does like with the numbers and like it kind of just like you know like it made me curious. So yeah. it just like so I started asking him just questions about it, and then when I got to high school, I you know like like they got the classes to say so I'm like I'm like well. If I want to do this and stay close to basketball, I like I got to do this other stuff. So mm -hmm. just so so just taking those classes really kind of helped me, and then just just you no know, just my love for for, for for math. I mean, like it kind of just helped me you know, stay. So it's like you know how they say like in, in in sports, like first one here, last one out. So it's kind of like that for you, like in the classroom, more so like. Staying back a little bit for like poly tutorials or yeah, maybe mean, like knowing what the teacher trying to figure. Hey, I this lesson we did. I need some more insight on this. Yeah, I mean, I I'm, I mean, I'm not gonna come up here and, and like say I'm an A plus. I mean, like right. I I did struggle in the beginning just because I was having that that freshman mentality. Like, oh, I got all this time. Like, I don't gotta. Right. But with the support from not only my my family but my coaches, because like they teach the subjects like math and all that. So like they really helped. Like like they helped me become the student I am today. So, like, just learning little tips from them, like, just, like, study techniques and, like, going to the toilet, like, they really helped me out. And that's what really got me going for, like, as far as, like, academics. Like, they really got me the the, the support and the motivation that I needed. Mm. When you talk about the academic piece, how much do you stress that on your teammates? Um, I mean, I don't have to because my teammates are, like, Oh yeah, they're, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, I got you. They're smart. I, mean, I got you. I, I got mean, you. like I think like our highest GPA is like a four or six. So oh, like, yeah. it's not me, but like, but like my team and like and like and like that's one thing about our, like our team is like we have guys 
who have classes together and like we always hey like you need help with this or like and like that's what I'm talking about about us being together like we're always looking out for each other so like that's one big thing about us is like having those classes together and just asking for help like that really helps us out too. Mm. And then, and I and I get it because I know when I played, but I I feel three to four years, like my academics was was bad, you know get on the team but once when midterm come, I'm not even playing district. Only play, I got district. I, I went play district senior year, and after I was a senior, cause I know how, I know, the emphasis of trying to stress that academic part because a lot of these teachers don't really care. They want to just make sure their students make, you know, because you got some schools out there that you know when they come to top athletes, they like we gonna look out for you, but some schools don't, you know, don't work like that. But I, I appreciate, and I like that you have the mentality of having something outside of basketball, making sure, because a lot of times players, they, they just focus all in and they don't think of a plan B. So I, I really do appreciate that mindset though. Yeah. Yeah. And my school does a really good job too, because like we're one of like the top schools for yeah. like, you know, like for, for academics. Yeah. So like there's always resources to get help. And I, and I think like that's what really not only helped me out, but helped everybody out. Cause like our school is like, they push you to be the, your best, yeah. but they also give you the help that you need. Yeah. So I'm gonna do. I'm gonna ask. Mm-hmm. Let's say a freshman's watching this or eighth grader watching this, and they want to get to where you want to be at. They want to go D1. What's that one advice you give them? Time management. That's the biggest one. That's what I struggle with. Time, time management. There's always gonna be time to hang out with your friends. There's always gonna be time to be on your phone, but put what's necessary first. Like get a workout in, do your homework, go to class. Like all the extra stuff can can happen another time, but just make sure you manage your time well. Cause, Cause, I learned, I, I learned the hard way, and I don't want people to have to go through what I have to go through. So, just time management would be the the biggest thing. Yeah. Top five players in the league. Right now. Right now. Ooh, okay. Or, I want to kill actually, but hold on. Before that, I want to really kill. I'm gonna get the kill question before that. Jordan or LeBron? Jordan. That's a trip how they, Be, that's cool. but but I will say LeBron has more variety, like more to his game, but just <laughs> Jordan's just he's Jordan. But growing up watching LeBron, like, I can see why people would like would say LeBron. But I will say if LeBron came first, it wouldn't be an argument. But like, I'm not gonna get to that. But, yeah, yeah, I, I, I get it. You know what's funny? It's crazy how the Jordan thing it goes on we were talking about Cowboys, it goes on generations on. Like you can look you could put on a Jordan highlight and you could be like, he's doing things that Players can't even do now. Like, you don't even see they doing on the court. So, it's crazy how to Jordan. That's why I yeah, like that. Top five players in the top league? Top five right now. Ant Edwards. You know what? I'm going to give you respect because Minnesota's one of the best teams in the league right now. So, like. Yeah. Shea. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Got to go, Joe Kitch. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. I will say KD just because he's my favorite player. Okay. Yeah. And, and And then. Well, let's do this. Let's say post. Let's say post LeBron, KD, Let's like the new guys. The let's, newer, the newer guys. Yeah, like Shea and. Okay, so like the, like the younger guys. I would say so. Shea and Edwards. Jokic. Jokic. Luca. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. I like Tyrese. Maxi. Since oh. South Garland, baby. I like. I, I, oh, no, wait. Halliburton. Halliburton. Oh, Halliburton. Halliburton. I'll take Halliburton. Halliburton. Ooh, yeah. Halliburton. I, I thought, I thought Max, but no, I no, no. But like yeah. but, 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 but Halliburton. Just, yeah, I'm gonna get yeah, you. I, yeah, yeah. I think that he's stepped up. From the post, like the post Harden trailer, I think he stepped up tremendously. I, I think that, like him sitting behind Harden, he kind of learned a little bit, mm-hmm. and then like now, and and now with him having to step up, like, I I think he's doing a good job. Mm-hmm. But yeah, because Halliburton didn't he have like a twenty twenty game recently? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's good. Yeah. yeah, he's he's good. So who you who you got like best? Well, no, I'm gonna go because you you said Jokic. Cause I I got Jokic at the top ten big all time already. No, no, he is a top ten big though. Yeah, I got him top ten. Mm-hmm. I always, I always liked him over Embiid because he always was durable. Uh, I got him top fifteen. Top fifteen. Yeah. So you taking him or, or Patrick Ewing? Him. Him or David Robinson? David Robinson. Really? Yeah. You think you, you you agree with that? No, I I said Jokic packs passed him up this year. I like Jokic just passed him up for me, so I yeah. got Jokic at six right now. Six, the six big man. I'm. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna tell you something easy never told you. He probably don't tell a lot of people this. Chris Paul. I, I, I like Chris Paul. I know. I, I'm, yeah. I'm with you. 
Everybody in this room do. Three out of four people do. See, see, see. I can like Chris Paul is a he's no he's still in the game, right? But there's like there's little stuff that Chris Paul does that no other point guard does. It's like it's the little things, and like and like that's what separates. Him. He all right. He think Chris Paul is not a top five point guard all time. As far as accolades, no. But just being a player of the game, yes. Can't go against that. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to even go against that. I'm not going to go against that. I'm not going to go against Because his impact on teams is what's really great. But the problem is that I understand what everybody says. But I think for a long time, a lot of people – Consider Chris Paul as this championship player. But he hasn't won a championship. Yeah, he hasn't won a championship. Yeah. So it's just more like now is your impact on teams. But we're not saying that about like guys like Steph or LeBron. We're judging them on the championship mantle. Yeah. So it's just more like you've had a lot of good teams. Yeah. You've been the guy. You've been not the guy. You've been the first option, the second option, third mm-hmm. option. It's just more like, hey, man. Yeah, but I would say he's a top ten point guard for sure. But you know what's funny? Now, nah, go back with that ref he had beef with. Bro, shut up. We're not doing this. A lot of, uh, we're not that, doing this. Scott's I think shit. that ref kind of screwed we're, him we're, up, we're, we're not having this conversation with some I, I think there's some refs that go out for certain. Yeah, players. like, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on. like Bro, he's been, he's in year 19, me, bro. Me, me, okay, me being a Pistons guy, like, I know there's, like, I like, like I read something, like, that some refs would, would go out there uh, sheep. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I believe that. That could ruin that could ruin somebody's series. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like game he I found out he ref game seven when he was on the Hornets against the Spurs. You know, he had it out because the cause you know that's messed up how he how he did his son. Once I heard that, that's kind of messed up. Yeah. And I think, you know, I, I always say I'm a Chris I'm a Chris Paul person because he another thing about he don't like Houston teams. He don't like the Rockets, the Texans, the Astros. He don't like he don't like none of them. Mm. Chris Paul. No. Uh, I'll be I'll be happy when they lose. <laughs> um, top five. No, my five. It's not even top five. Four. Two thousand and twenty-four guys that you would run with, and I want you to keep in mind. Beg is your boy. He I, did not pick you. I know. Oh, he didn't pick me. <laughs> <laughs> he Beg did not pick you. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> he said, "I love AJ, but I'm not picking him." Uh, okay. J- j- uh, just from the city, right? Yeah. Who? 2024. 2024. I'm going to go. From my center, give me Trent. You know, it doesn't even have to be in, 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 in like, his position. Okay. But, but if you want to still yeah, choose okay. Trent, you can. Okay. Hmm. This is tough because no, like, <laughs> no, wait, give, no, wait, give me me, Chris. Chris. McDermott. Oh, oh yeah, McDermott. Okay. Give Booker me. T. Give me Jared. Harris. Okay, I think yeah. Give me Rob. Miller, yes. And give me give, no give my teammate. Give me Payet. Oh, Clarence Payet, the Louisiana Tech man. Yeah. I think he said the same thing about Payet too. I think he chose I think he chose I know he chose Rob and, and, and Jared for yeah, Rob, Jared, and Payet for a fact. I forgot who's the other one. Um let me see who what else. Give me a twenty twenty four that you wish that you have run with. That I, that wish I had run with? I think this this is tough. I think give me any one of the bigs from from the twenty twenty four class and we would make some just because like no, but you ran with Trent, so that don't count. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah. I'm saying like a Chris or a Rock, like Justin. Like, Justin said the same thing. Just because like my like my play style is a downhill facilitated type of guy to where I can facilitate for my for me and myself. And you give me a big that can roll, I can. I, I did it with Josh. But yeah. he, but he, but you even got like Chris or Rob. or Rob. So it's funny though because I told Justin the same. My guy was um, I would it would have been interesting to see you guys run with Zion Pipkin. I, I said I I would I have I would pay to see that <laughs> that guard dynamic you Zion and Justin in a in, 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 in a backcourt. So that was my guy. Another question. Who is the player that brings the best out of you in this city? In the city, like when you when you when, when it's a matchup, AU high school, when it's a matchup, like when you see him, like you better get your hard hat ready. There's three. There's three. But well, I'm gonna count Luke because he was here. Oh, right. Oh yeah. Cause, okay. Because okay. like me and him, like the war since middle school. Yeah, <laughs> and then, like and like off the court, me and Luke are like like we cool, but on the court, it was just something. 
like the energy like it was just like i like i don't like this dude i just want to beat him like i just like <laughs> it was just that energy that we had but off the court like me and Luke are real real cool yeah zion same same thing like me and zion just have battles like we like AU like you know and like in the uh in like the preseason like we play against him, like just having those battles against him like they really like feel like prepare me like with the scrappiness and the physicality he plays with the last one I'm, I'm trying to think of, of some guards that i played against i would say hmm, this is tough because i played against a lot of good you know and it, it doesn't have to be just 2024 because i know justin chose montana oh so. yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, like, I played against Montana once, and, like, he brought, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, like, I, like, I can't really base it off of that one, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one interaction. Oh, this is tough. Just because, like, there's so, there's so many great guys. I would say one person that always, like, it, like in practice that always brought out of me was Devon. I like that. Just because competitive, and he, and he wants to win. So, like, and, like I, and I think that that really drove me to – because I, cause, cause I know some yeah. – down the line, I, I, I got to see him. So, it's like it really prepared me. Um, give me a sleeper that you don't think nobody really gives a lot a lot of credit to, but guys that, that your peers know, but the, but really the city doesn't know that he's better than what, every, what, what, what people are sleeping on. Ooh, that's – I'm trying to – because, like, oh, this is tough. I'm trying to think right now. This is, hmm. I'll give one from my school, Sean. Sean. Sean is, Sean can be, a, like he can be a P five guy. I think that once, like once he, once he continues to like develop as a player, like he can be, a, a, like one of those top guys. And I think, someone like not from my school. I think, Cole, Jaden. Oh, Jaden. Yeah. I, yeah. Like like I, don't, like, I don't, like I don't like I don't think people give him the the the, the amount of respect that he deserves because he's a yeah like, no no he's really good him he's being really a smaller good. guard the way that he controls the game and just does what he does like he, I, I I said in 2025 I thought that him and Montana would be the the, the guys that's the torch guys mm -hmm. for point guards like yeah and the thing is people don't realize Holt is a winner. Like he wins, he wins he's games. Competitive. He's he he's yes. competitive. Like he's uh -huh. like he's done a real good job at Jordan, just getting those guys together. And I and you know like every time I see him, I tell him like, bro, like, like you know like like that's the guy you're passing the mantle mantle to next year, basically. Yeah. Um, top five Houston hoops teammates, and I'm just I'm gonna give you really rated. I don't think Beg picked you on this one. No, I think he did. He may have. He did. He, he did. did. All yeah. of top five he Houston. Top five. He did. All, okay. Yeah, but, but, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Top five. Yeah. For one of them, I got to pair. pair okay. I, for one of them, I got to pair them together because they was always together. Jared and Draylen. Because they, <laughs> I we, we drove up to Dallas and I had picked them up and that was the, the funniest car ride. I I, I got to put those two together because that's like a, a package deal. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Beg because me and Beg always had that connection. Yeah. Ooh, I'm trying to trying to trying to see trying to see. Uh, Bryce Jackson. Shadow Creek, twenty twenty five. Yeah, my uh, sixteen year. Yeah. Like we uh, played together, and the way the like the way he thinks the game, like we like we, like kind of think similarly, just to where, like we would just bounce ideas off each other. If he gets back healthy, how deadly is he? Oh, people, hey, people gotta watch out. Yeah, that's a that's a dog. His pops got him right. Like his pops real hard. Like just like just, like bro, like just like my pops, he real hard on him. But Bryce, like, 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 once he get ready, like, he, like, the top, top guy. And your favorite Houston hoops team that you played on? I can't pick one. That's that's a I. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I would say probably the sixteen, the, the, the sixteen U team. But I did get moved up towards the end. Yeah. But I would no, I would say that seventeen U team group from my six, like with Jalen Low, Jaylen, like just being around them and seeing that chemistry that they built, like I really enjoyed my time being with them. So I'm gonna say that group just because me, Justin, and Devon, like like we all got moved up to that team. Yeah. Although we weren't there long, yeah. I, I I enjoyed my time just because like they made it fun. What's some notable EYBL performances 
that you remember, like in your three years? Like I was vividly there, like, you know, Beg told me like when 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 Fox had 40 in the EYBL circuit and stuff like that. He said Trey Johnson walked off the plane from Hungary and he yeah. had 30. Yeah. He said, so, so just talk about like no and Jalen Lowe's run. Like, yeah, like, I would say just experience – well, I got two. Yeah. Experiencing that run with the 17s that they had, making it to the Final Four, like that was something that it was just like – like it was just different. Like, yeah. Just, mm. just the way that they were playing, the chemistry, just all of that. I do – not to cut you off, the performance when Lowe went head-to-head with DJ Wagner. I know you were there. Yeah. What did that say about Jalen Lowe that day? They, that he's a top guy. I mean, and, and I've always said that Jalen was a top point guard, no matter, like, like, no matter who you compare him to. Like, I think he's one of those top guys. And he's showing it now at Pitt. Yeah. They, he's a top guy. Mm-hmm. And, I've, and, and, like, I've seen it from practices to games. Like, he's always been that leader, that type of guy. And I think that that's, not, like, being that, like, spending that time with him, that's what kind of rubbed off on me was the way that he leads, the way that he, like, like he's, like, he, like, he would be a jerk. But it's out of love, and I think I try to like use that same, that same type of like mentality to lead my teams. And then, the, and then one of my performances that I had was, it was six and you. Uh, the first session, uh, the seventeens, the, uh, they had called up Cheedy, Devon, yeah. and just and, and like we had played Rens, and I had like I had, I think I had like a really good game, and like to us only lose about like five, with a, like a group of guys that just. Banded together within two days, like that's like like th- like that's something that really, cause like we had played, like that whole week, like we only had guys who had been together for like like it was like me, Gambrell, yeah, Nolan, like just guys that like we just kind of like grouped together and like we went out and I think we, we went two and two, and like two and two with a group of guys that just got together is like I would like I would say is a really good weekend. Yeah, my last question is. We, in, we we just answered in January. Who's that one team that you got marked in that calendar? It's like, I can't wait to play some. Ooh. It got to be Jordan right now, right? See, I'm, see, me, see, me being who I am, like, I'm, I mean, of course, you don't want to count your chickens for the hatch, but, like, I'm thinking long term. Okay. Okay. I'm, like, I'm thinking, like, playoffs. Okay. And, okay. And, let's, and, let's talk about it. And I want my rematch with Atasca Cedar. Mm. Just because what I, what round would you see that was that is that would that would that be a regional I'm trying to I got I don't uh, remember fourth that or fifth round okay for, like just ju- just depending but I want to but I want to show everyone that that first game was a, like like that was just us like we shot ourselves in the foot like that wasn't them beating us we beat ourselves and I think that that's the game that I that that I'd want to play because how many rounds until state six. Well, they get five to get out the city. Yeah, five to get out the city. Okay, five to get out the city. Yeah, yeah. If, yeah, so if you the far as you went was four. Yeah. yeah. So this year, y'all win state if we. Yeah, I mean, like, I think that if we just continue what we're doing, like, mm-hmm. I like our chances against anybody. Yeah. Okay. And my last question is, who is AJ Bates? A winner, a dog, a leader, charismatic. I love it. I love it. <laughs> hey, Breaking it out, man. Hey, <clears throat> real dude with a kill. Easy corner collab. Young Bull, AJ Bates, we appreciate you. Appreciate y'all. Easy Corner here with the point guard killer, the Louisiana Tech commit, Seven Lakes own, Mr. AJ Bates. Oh, man, go ahead, AJ. Throw out your social media, throw out everything, man. Uh, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snap, uh, AJ Bates underscore 24. Uh, appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. Nah, appreciate so, it, dog. We out. Yeah.